We just don't know what it is or why it's so aggressive in evading the antibiotics. This is our floating home, and this is what's all around us. Nothing but desert and ocean as far as the eye can see. It's incredibly beautiful, and places like these are the reason why we choose to spend most of our lives at sea. We've spent weeks at a time sailing thousands of miles without stopping, braving 30-foot seas and howling winds. It's exhausting, man. The body just gets beat, beat, beat. Facing heroin experiences that shook us to our core. So scary, though. Overcoming challenge after challenge just to keep our systems and necessities of life operational, all in the name of exploring the furthest reaches of the Earth finding little pockets of peace, solitude, and unbelievable beauty away from the hustle and bustle of civilization. But what happens when things go wrong, and the same isolation we seek is now what stands between us and getting help when the person you love most in the world is having a medical emergency? Well, here's the situation. Uh, a few days ago, Kaza started not feeling well. Um, fever, headaches, tired, a little bit of nausea. Uh, we've been working with the doctor. We have a doctor friend in the US that has kindly offered to consult with us. We've been chatting with him over the internet. Uh, her fever was 39.5 Celsius, which is I think 103.1 Fahrenheit. So. It's fairly significant. She's not improving and it's been three days of high fever. So we, we just need to get somewhere and get some tests done. Uh, we just don't know what it is or why it's so aggressive in evading the antibiotics. Feeling okay, Kaz? Just the same? Just the same. I was just trying to fill everybody in on what it's like to be really pretty sick. Oh in it's the middle of so nowhere hot. and it's uh, it's like 104 degrees in the boat yesterday i mean the, the real problem is that trying to me trying to take care of karen and sierra and the boat is like a lot uh so luckily our good friend grace from calico skies has offered to come with us so she's gonna help uh manage sierra while yeah, nice question. Um, navigating like the boat. If we do get to Loretto and like it is something serious, then she, she's there to help out. Yeah, with just Sierra like keeping Sierra in the hospital for like a long time would be like really bad. Yeah. So that's what we're going through right now. Um, wish us luck uh, and a huge thank you to Grace for coming with us. It's our savior. Grace, thank you so much, Grace. Oh, of course, Brian. I would give you a hug, but do. you would not believe how incredibly sweaty yeah, and disgusting I, I am. Yeah, I'm pretty sweaty myself. Oh, wow. Well. No, I'm happy to be here. We'll and mix our sweats. Yeah. Just hope um, the house feels better soon. Nugs is being really good. I just made her some apples. Oh. Here, do you want some apples? Ooh, Ooh num 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 num. Yeah. <laughs> num, there you go. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna get underway, get Kaza sorted out, yeah. and um, Everything's going to be fine. We had a little under 50 miles to cover to reach the nearest medical clinic, which might not sound like a lot, but with our average speed of just over five knots in these light winds, that's about 10 hours of travel. To give you some context, that would be about the equivalent of traveling from New York City to Detroit by car if you were averaging 70 miles an hour. But in the scheme of some of the remote sailing and ocean passages we've done over the years, we were actually really lucky to be within a day's sail of help. The conditions were pretty pleasant, and our departure was going smoothly. Perhaps a little too smoothly. So in true cruiser fashion, at least one thing was bound to break. And with Kaza out for the count, and Grace in full baby wrangler mode, I wouldn't even be able to troubleshoot the problem while underway. Grace, thank God you're here because <laughs> <laughs> the autopilot just fails. Yeah, it's like it knew I was going to be here or something. 
I don't know what happened. Like I thought the autopilot was on and like we were going all over the place and it kept on giving me off course alarms and Grace is like, what's that beeping? I'm like, that was oh, I sale. Yeah, like that's where and I was like, no, well shit, the autopilot won't even engage. And so imagine Kaz is sick, trying to watch Sierra, have to drive the boat. I'd literally have to stop the, the entire boat and just sit here every time she had to go pee, right? So I'm glad you're here. We gotta fix Kazza, we gotta fix autopilot. Yeah. Un, dos, tres, cuatro. Fish, fish on, fish on. Okay, Grace is driving. Good thing Grace is here. We're gonna get that fish. Yep. Okay, I've stepped away from the helm. Okay. Let's see what we got. Ready? We're gonna try and get it off. Yeah! Yeah, look how big it is! Okay, ready? Beautiful body. jump back on the helm. The boat needs some help. But it's okay, Nugs. And we're gonna try and catch another fish. Oh. Yeah, it'll be okay. Holy crap, we got another Sierra! We got another fish, you saw it! It's your chance, Brian, no pressure. I gotta redeem myself. <laughs> oh, it's a skipjack. We had hooked a skipjack which unlike the tasty mahi I had just lost, is one of the very few fish that we really don't enjoy eating. It's a very dark, bloody, strong tasting meat, and I find it pretty hard to cook. So I ended up releasing it and putting the line back out. And strangely enough, we kept on getting bite after bite after bite. Another one, it's another one. Looks like a big fish. Look at that pole on there. We're gonna get this fish. But we kept pulling in one skipjack after another, each time releasing it back into the ocean. Jeez, five! It's the fifth one. I swear, if this isn't a good keeper of a fish, I'm not. I'm not putting a line back out. What is it? It's another skipjack, Grace. There you go. All right, he's back. I'm not putting the line back in. That's enough. Throwing skipjacks back for a day. Our hot streak turned out to be a welcome distraction from the gravity of Kaz's situation. This wasn't our first major medical situation on board Delos, but it's still a pretty scary feeling. In 2011, we were in Raja Ampat, a stunning chain of islands in Indonesia. My brother Brady got what we believe to be an extreme case of food poisoning. Traveling around to remote and exotic places, we were no stranger to stomach bugs, but this was next level. After dining at a street-side bakso soup cart, which is a kind of an Indonesian meatball soup, he got an extremely high fever, with hallucinations, chills, sweats, and lost an incredible amount of fluid out of both ends. Luckily, we were able to treat it with the antibiotics that we had on board, and by the next day, he was on the road to recovery. I still feel really terrible, but don't have a crazy, delirious fever. Brady was also the patient in our other major incident in Coco's killing. Rinsing the fish guts off my hand and got attacked by a barracuda. It was super gnarly, but luckily we were close enough to a medical clinic to get it stitched up. But had we been somewhere else without access to a clinic, we do actually have quite a few supplies on board to stitch up wounds. Having a well-stocked medical kit on board is critical for any cruiser, and ours is pretty thorough and well-organized. We have a wide range of antibiotics, various strengths of painkillers, fungal treatments, supplies to treat burns, wounds, stomach ailments, seasickness, allergic reactions, dental problems, stings, eye, ear, and throat issues, and more. We've actually made an entire video about all this, so if you'd like to really get into the nitty gritty details of it, please click on the link here to check it out, or just search on SV Delos Medical Kit and it should come up. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. What is your favorite thing about wine? Oh, that would definitely be drinking it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and what's your least favorite thing? I think that one is pretty easy too. It's like finding the wine to drink. If like us, you can relate to choosing wine, then I think you're really gonna like Bright Cellars. It's a super cool product, easy to use. All you have to do is head on over to brightcellars.com forward slash svdelos1. Don't forget the Don't one. Don't forget the one, very important. <laughs> you take a simple seven question quiz. It's even multiple choice. You don't need to know anything fancy about wines. Just know what you like for taste, what you don't like, things like that. Once you answer the quiz, <laughs> voila. So these were the wines that were selected for us and they look really good. You also get this educational card with tasting notes, suggested pairings, and other helpful information. That's really good. Oh yeah, that's so much better than that box wine in Panama. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right, we're off. <laughs> we're, off. <laughs> we're off. We're off. I don't know what that means. We're just gonna go with it. <laughs> So to get started, just head on over to brightcellars.com forward slash svdelos1. If you do right now, you'll get 50 bucks off your first four bottle box purchase. Awesome, and you will support our project as well. That's it. Thank you very much for watching, and now back to the show. It's getting dark and I'm getting tired, so we've got uh, 12 miles to go and I found this little anchorage here so I just pulled in, we'll rest and then uh, I can wake up at like really early and we can get there first thing. After a good night of sleep. Yeah. Sunset's insane. Uh, it's a nice anchorage too. It's nice and, nice to and calm. It. The other thing is that anchorage Loretto oh. is on the, that coast and so we'd be on a lee shore with uh, the wind, right? And so yeah. it's a lot of fetch and so I think it'd be really bumpy over there. Yeah. So better to go over there early in the morning than try and spend the night, I think. Yeah. yeah. So a little update. Uh, we made it to Loretto. Still having some really random like things going on in my body. Like my mouth feels really raw. It feels like 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 it's on fire almost. Uh, I have a really kind of weird rash. I think pretty much on my whole body, but during on certain parts specifically, and like where I'm not suntanned, you can see it more. So like my butt looks crazy. It's almost like blood underneath the skin. Anyway, let's go in and see what's going on, and hopefully they will tell me something. We had been in contact through WhatsApp with a lovely friend of a friend of a friend named Margie that we had never talked to or met before. While we were under sale, she had relayed all the details to a local doctor and had everything lined up when we arrived. A huge thanks to Margie for opening up her home to us and treating complete strangers like friends. She is such an amazing kind person and her hospitality blew me away. Within minutes she had whisked us directly to her house since it was a Sunday and the clinic wasn't open. She had set up a comfy room and two doctors arrived and immediately began to assess the situation. They put me on an IV cocktail with antibiotics and a mixture of immune boosting vitamins. Okay, so this is Dr. Salinas. He's Hello. making a house call today. Thank you so much. He's amazing. Not a problem. And uh, we're doing diagnosis. I feel like as new, hopefully by tomorrow. Luckily, we have a friend here with a house. I know. Margie. And we've got an IV set up. We put this ladder in. This is cruiser style here. And, uh, we're going to get you better. Yeah. We get some labs done, some blood work done, Come on. get some IV in you, some vitamins, some other medicines. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get it figured out. So it feels good to have seen the doctor for sure. I feel like a lot of the things is just like the unknown too. Like you don't know what it is. Like is it dengue? Is it like typhoid? Is or like something that they have here that I don't even know about? But it seemed like most likely like something salmonella. So we went to that one restaurant. Like everybody else ate at the same restaurant and nobody else got sick. But he was saying that 
I was already, because I was already struggling with my UTI, like my body can't like fight it as good. So that's probably why I got really sick and nobody else really got sick, so. After about six hours on the IV, resting, managing to finally get some food in my belly, it was like night and day. Not only did I feel so much better physically, I also felt such an incredible relief knowing that this scary week long ordeal was finally under control. It's just amazing the people you meet. Like we didn't know Marge at all before. And she is like, of course I'll help you, like calling the doctor, organizing, we get a room to stay, we get our own bathroom, like she's just been amazing like such an amazing person and to sh get that hospitality from somebody that you've never met before and that haven't watched the videos like she doesn't know anything about the videos it's like a friend of a friend of a friend right so she doesn't know us at all <laughs> but i'm so relieved oh my god it's been really rough for all of us for brian too but we're on the we're on the mending so I hope it can only go up from here, <laughs> right? So here's what we've done so far. It was yeah. two doctors with all the medications and the supplies and the IVs and the antibiotics, two doctors, three house visits. That was 5,000 pesos, about $250. US and then the labs were a thousand pesos, about fifty dollars US. So in total we've spent about three hundred dollars US um, for really good care. I think it's maybe like not like crazy cheap, but I think I don't know how much it would cost in the US. I shudder to think what it would be. Probably like at least ten times that much. <laughs> I don't know. At least. Like a doctor would never come home to you to begin with. The blood work confirmed that it was in fact salmonella, and the doctor gave us the go-ahead to return back to Delos and stay on anchor nearby, just in case it took an unsuspected turn for the worse. We took Delos around the corner so we could meet up with Bill and deliver Grace back to her own floating home. What, who do you see? Mama! Is it Bill? <laughs> Wait to Bill! just so good to be here. No, I'm so like, happy you're feeling better. You saved us. Aww, like we so couldn't funny. have done it without you and it means so much. I staying with you guys. Aww. I had so much fun with Nugget. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. You guys are like family. Aww. <laughs> well, I miss you, Grace. Oh, you're, 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 you're my hangout buddy. Oh, well, Kazan's down. We did have a good time. Yeah, for the couch. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Bye, Ryan. Up next on Delos. After making a full recovery, it's time to celebrate Kaza's birthday with a raft-up party in one of the most beautiful anchorages in the Sea of Cortez. But just when he thought all was right in the world again, we wake up to this. We're rafted up, and this happening. Like, I'm a little nervous right now. What was that? Oh my god, that was Bill's solar panel! Uh, okay. This is another Kaza's favorite top three, and I will say <laughs> if I agree or disagree. I will probably agree. With, with what? What category? Countries that you've ever visited by sailboat. Wow, okay. Top three mm -hmm. would be... Oh, it's so hard. It's tough. Because I have four. Okay, do four. I have South Africa. Mm-hmm. Madagascar, mm -hmm. Philippines, mm -hmm. and New Zealand. No wonder why we get along so well. <laughs> yeah, those are my top four. Yeah. They're amazing. Me too. I also In really love ways. Brazil. Brazil's yes. incredible. Yeah. That's five. I like Panama. No, Sandra you can't just amazing. add. <laughs> I can, and I will. You just add countries. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's it. Okay, bye. So what's the news from down below? So 
I think that poop was definitely slowing her down. <laughs> She's like running around right now. That was like definitely more than a day's poop. Was it a big one? It was a big one. It was one. hefty. Yeah, it was hefty. Wow. Did you get any on you? No, but while I was busy trying to get it in the toilet, she I guess she like dropped a book in like the potty. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so one of her books. What is, we're talking about. <laughs> you did such a good bye, Sierra. Did you poop in your oh, sorry. potty? Mayday Lab. Am I gonna do my blood test? Mayday Lab. <laughs> Mayday Lab. <laughs> Mayday Lab. <laughs> Meta Lab. <laughs> Meta Lab. <laughs> Diarrhea is decreasing. <laughs> Correct.